from the Signature Bank Studios. If you're looking for the latest news, insight into what it means, and the sharpest opinion, there's only one station in Chicago where you can turn, and it's this one. We're AM560, The Answer. Top of the morning, Dan and Amy. Uh, Well, Ron DeSantis, uh, since the uh, failed assassination attempt on Trump, number two, over the weekend in West Palm, has uh, announced that he is going to do his own state-level investigation. He's going to have state-level investigators also examine what happened here because they could bring state-level charges against the uh, person in custody. And uh, he defended that announcement and that decision and explained it in a little bit more detail yesterday. I think what will, um, well, what will reveal, I think, is the important thing. What the state does is going to be made public. I mean, if you guys know who are from Florida, you can FOIA a lot of, of, of the stuff that's done in these investigations under Florida Sunshine Laws. And then they have a charge to be very frank and exercise candor with the public. Uh, I want the information to get out. I do not want any of the information uh, kept under wraps. We, we're not a party to anything that happened in terms of the state, state of Florida government. I mean, we have been asked to help in the past on security, and we're always willing to do that. But that wasn't our primary. We were not uh, responsible for it that day. Um, we've not been responsible for any of the prosecutions that have been brought against the former president. So we're in a great, great situation to be able to look at this with clear eyes, uh, get answers, and then deliver those answers to the public. Um, I don't think anyone can honestly claim that the federal government has been forthright and transparent about its past investigations. That's just the reality. That's just how these guys operate. Apart from any type of political bias, that's how it's been uh, really for many, many years. That's not how it's going to be here. Uh, and so we'll, we'll cooperate with, with all agency or all levels of government because I think that some of those gun charges may be appropriate to bring, but not to the exclusion of bringing a charge for something like attempted murder. Mm. Um, I mean, it's a not so subtle dig at the FBI. It's I mean, you can't read it any other way than to basically say, look, uh, we don't trust what the FBI is going to do in terms of investigating what happened at Trump International on Sunday. That's what he's saying. Uh, For reaction to that and uh, more discussion on what we know 48 hours after the fact, I guess close to 72 now. Uh, James Fitzgerald joins us, retired FBI special agent and criminal profiler from the Unabomber case. Uh, Now the co-host of the Cold Red podcast. It's on Spotify, Apple, and all the usual platforms. Cold Red. Cold Red is the Fitzgerald podcast. James Fitzgerald, thanks for joining us again. Appreciate it. Dan, always good to be on with you, although never for reasons like this. Yeah, right. Well, I mean, how do you uh, react to, you know, Ron DeSantis' decision to run a parallel investigation? Yeah, I, I like it a lot, actually. Um, there is no reason, there is no uh, separation of jurisdictions here. I mean, there, there is legally in that sense, but they have every right to do their own investigations, certainly for any state crimes that uh, would would be committed or certainly charged uh, or, or some kind of indictment that would come forth. So they have every right to do it. Um, I'm wondering um, if they've had a chance. Their FDLE, part of the Department of Law and Enforcement investigators. They're good folks. I've worked with them over the years. There's agents and interviewers. There's profilers we trained there. And um, I, I'd be very curious if they had a chance to interview uh, uh, this most recent shooter. You know, I don't use their names on the air, mm-hmm. give them any credit. Mm-hmm. So the most, uh, you know, Trump two assassination attempt shooter. And I'd like to see what kind of information they would get and how long before that would possibly be released to the public, even through a uh, a regular FOIA uh, request, as DeSantis mentioned. So, uh, yeah, I again, I, I trust the ground uh, agents in my former agency, but I know now it used to be the very top tier that I didn't trust, but I know that's metastasized a bit to the middle level, uh, mid-management level, and again, not all of them, but there's some in there with uh, with agendas. In fact, I think the SAC, the special agent in charge of the Miami division, yeah. Before he got promoted to that position, he had to scrub all his anti-Trump stuff right. over Jeffrey um, uh, on, on, on Facebook, et cetera. And, and he is, um, you know, ostensibly in charge of this investigation. So from the federal level. So uh, I like seeing uh, DeSantis and the FDLE have their tentacles in it. And um, and let's see how they compare. The, the bureau's not used to this. Usually they come in and take over. 
and ultimately they'll have jurisdiction. But so far, it's only weapons offenses this guy's been charged with, uh, not an actual attempted assassination part. And it's weird, the prosecutor that in that county, and I'm not sure, I think that was a local prosecutor, he actually laid out, laid out a defense for the uh, any defense attorneys who would be involved within hours, saying, well, I don't think we could ever charge him because he didn't pull a trigger, didn't really have him in sight. Okay, well, thank you. Mr. Prosecutor, for putting the defense out there, or at least one aspect of it, to potential lawyers who are representing this guy. So, uh, bottom line, to answer your question, I'm glad FDLE is involved. Let's see if it's kind of a checks and balances to the other investigation or investigations going on. <clears throat> yeah, but how can he get a fair investigation if they're also investigating Trump on other charges and other allegations? Well, again, we're delineating the F, uh, the feds from the locals here, and uh, locals meaning FDLE, really the state police, in effect, in Florida. Um, so, uh, I, I, again, I, Amy, I like to think there are some agents there who, again, with that that uh, figurative uh, Chinese wall up in their in their brain and in their in their offices, and say, all right, these guys are working this part of Trump. Uh, we're working this part of Trump, meaning people trying to kill him. And hopefully they can keep some level of, uh, of objectivity in there. And, uh, of course, they have to answer to prosecutors and U.S. attorneys. And hopefully those people are objective and empirical and they're looking at just the facts and nothing else. But uh, well, I know as an agent myself, I could, pro- I could you know, provide that, that uh, separation, if you will. But uh, I just hope the other agents and the supervisors there working this case uh, can do the same thing. Yeah, one can hope. Um... The um, the relationship between the FBI and Secret Service, uh, we, we asked this question of Mike Olson, who's retired Secret Service agent the other day. And, and his answer is basically, you know, like in terms of um, the nature of, of the uh, investigation the FBI does into what transpired, uh, both in Butler, that's been ongoing for two months, as well as now in West Palm. Um, he, he sort of said, you know, sort of personnel specific. How does the the field office director in Miami for Secret Service get along with field office director in Miami for the FBI, for example, in this case. Is that your view on it? Do you have any general comment you would make on the relationship between Secret Service and the FBI, you know, to, to the question of who investigates the investigators? Um, or is it, as Olson said, it's just really sort of relationship specific? Well, there's probably some of both that fits in. What I, what I always found as, as a working street agent in, in my New York City years for seven years, and then even as a profiler, the, the, the street agents and even a level or two up, they get along great with other agencies, with us, with the NYPD uh, and New York State Police and, and certainly other agencies uh, around the country, including other federal agencies. The worker bees almost always get along fine. It's the bosses and the egos that kick in up top. And of course, you're dealing more with the political substructure there. So sometimes you will find turf, you know, battles. And again, that relationship thing, do they play do the two bosses, top bosses of each office play golf together or, or tennis or poker, whatever? Uh, do their wives know each other, spouses, or do uh, or do they you know, genuinely dislike each other for for whatever reason? And um, I would hope in a case with this kind of worldwide profile, and I mean, that's exactly what this is. Any of those types of differences or affiliations would be put aside and, uh, and the objective element to it. And what's going to be unusual here, and you brought it up early on, Dan, is we do have a sort of a third party uh, investigative agency here that just through osmosis and through its very existence investigating this, this series of crimes or the crime itself. Um, it, it's going gonna, it's gonna to really make the other ones be very conscious yes. of, of what they do, what they say. And what I'm not clear about is, has anyone interviewed this guy yet? I mean, has he lawyered up right away? He seems like the type, with everything I've read about him, that he'd be willing to spouse off to whoever talked to him, probably on the I-95 there during the car stop. Right. And, um, uh, but, but, you know, some lawyers, and again, who would the lawyer be that represents him? That will be very interesting, too. Who pays for that lawyer? Is it a public defender? Is it some high, uh, you know, falutin guy out of uh, out of Florida or woman? Uh, you know, who knows? But that'll tell us something. Who's putting the money up to, to defend this guy? And um, that in of itself will have its own story behind it. Maybe I've heard of no legal representation yet. Yeah, maybe uh, Kamala can get her friends at the Minnesota Freedom Fund to uh, represent him. Um, anyway, I digress. Um, uh, so, yeah, speaking of the interaction 
Um, so the, the question, one of the questions that's out there, and this is a neutral question, it's not leading because I understand the volume that, you know, generally speaking, I understand the sort of volume you're dealing with uh, at FBI and Secret Service. But should this guy have been on FBI and or Secret Service's radar with his public profile and then the public profile combined with a criminal history, um, combined with a self-published book where he talks openly about the assassination of Trump and him doing it. Um, and then he's had these interactions overseas and uh, on American soil. Uh, records show Customs and Border Protection officials knew that he had traveled to Warsaw uh, and then Turkey in 22 and 23, admitting in an interview with them he had been recruiting as many as 100 foreign fighters from various countries. This is all documented in uh, reporting that is now out. The uh, Department of Homeland Security declined to pursue the matter further. Um, and then you had a retired CIA, or CIA analyst, I guess, at the time say he was, you know, basically a whack job. Um, that was her experience with him on the ground in Eastern Europe. A nurse said the same thing to Customs and Border Protection in an interview. So it's like the combination of interactions with law enforcement, what people in law enforcement were saying about this guy, his profile and in interviews in the New York Times. Um, the fact he himself was interviewed by Customs and Border Protection. You know, 23 years, we just um, memorialized the 23rd anniversary of 911. We were talking uh, after that, 9-11, after 9-11 was supposed to be, you know, interagency, federal, state, and local uh, communication and coordination. So these um, uh, these gaps in communication don't exist, and the, 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 the whole is greater than the sum of the parts. And I wonder what your, what your assessment is from what we know about... Um, all of these interactions and this profile that he has. Well, yeah, I'll, I'll go a few different directions here, but yeah, even the radios didn't work on the ground in Butler the day, you know, right. this, this communication uh, deficit we had at nine 11, you know, 20 some years ago, uh, you know, even the radios didn't work. I don't think we had that problem here. Uh, it reminds me though, there's a viral video right now and you may have seen it. Uh, I, I think it was in New Hampshire but two agents come to the door wearing jeans and, you know, casually dressed FBI agents. And they want to talk to some guy about a, an ex post he made. And the guy keeps saying, show me your creds, give me your full name. And of course he's, he's uh, recording the whole thing and they wouldn't do it. And they kind of walk away and it's getting a lot of, uh, it's going viral, a lot of hits. So, uh, so why didn't two agents like that go to the door of this guy uh, who, uh, who has all this, uh, all these footprints behind him of all sort of criminal uh, elements and associations or international uh, associations in that regard. And I'm a student of history. We've talked before, Dan and Amy, uh, and, and certainly on your podcast. But uh, if there's any comparison to be made between the Butler shooter, I see him as a John Hinckley wanting that performance, you know, get Jodie Foster to fall in love with him, whatever. I see this guy from Sunday more of a Lee Harvey Oswald type traveling to other countries, seeing himself as some sort of a soldier of fortune or perhaps misfortune in this guy's case. And, um, you know, we're, we're with Oswald. It was his fascination with Cuba. Of course, he lived in, uh, he lived in the Soviet Union for a while. This guy uh, has connections to other parts of the world, including Afghanistan, and at least tangentially to Iran. And, uh, and again, I, I'm not saying the sophistication level is the same with this guy as perhaps Oswald, if you want to give him a little bit of that, because he was successful. But uh, there are many, many elements to this that I can't believe there wasn't more of a watch on this guy and, and more interviews being done on a monthly basis. These same two agents knocking on his door and saying, all right, what are you doing? What kind of weapons do you have? And at least try to catch him in, in some lies. But apparently all that fell through and he was allowed to lay and wait for 12 hours, apparently. Um, in, 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 you know, half covered by some bushes outside a golf course where the former president, possibly future president of the U.S. was about to tee off. Yeah. Um, the the our, our arguments we're hearing from Ron Rowe, the acting director of Secret Service, not dissimilar to what we hear intermittently from Chris Ray and directors previous to him, that um, the response is um, we need more personnel. We need more personnel. We need to make sure our counter snipers are trained that like, you know, they're all Chris Kyle's um, and so on and so forth. But I mean, um, I, you know, I need more. I need more color on this, like just from a, a layman's perspective, common sense perspective. You have to persuade me. So what would more personnel have done uh, on July 13th 
or on Sunday. Um, you know, I, it's always this sort of appeal, like we, we're doing the best we can with what we have. But is that really true? Is that your sense of it? Just a, uh, s- several more agents or a little bit more counter sniper training and that agency is going to be humming? Well, one thing that some friends of mine have posited, and I don't disagree necessarily, perhaps Secret Service should get out of any of their investigative uh, duties, including credit card fraud and counterfeiting, and move completely to uh, presidential uh, protection, you know, executive protection for our, our top level political leaders. Maybe that's what they should do full time and, and give off those other duties to, to other agencies somewhere, uh, including looking for cocaine in the White House. Uh, so that's that's one factor there, I think, uh, that should have taken place. Um, I, I think coordination with police just putting, and I've seen this, you know, I knew this as a former police officer back in the day, just putting an empty police car around the four corners or even the six uh, sections, if you will, of the golf course could say, oh, boy, that officer can come back any time. I better not lay in wait here. That in of itself could uh, uh, dissuade someone from, from kicking in and trying some operation like this. They move somewhere else, I get it, but then you have more guard uh you know, more surveillance in that particular area. You kind of force them out of certain areas where you have the personnel to actually watch them. So uh, there are ways around this without, you know, I don't think the Secret Service should be rewarded with a higher uh, amount of money or a bigger budget right now, but they should be forced to uh, reassess and um, reposition their personnel to maybe make it full-time protection and double, if not triple or quadruple, who it is for for the presidential candidate who is obviously... The uh, you know nexus of much of these is that of all of these assassination attempts and threats. The threats, of course, being put out in many cases by uh, uh, by the other person who's running for the other uh, for the uh, for the position of president in the U.S. James Fitzgerald, retired FBI special agent and criminal profiler on the Unabomber case, now the co-host of the Cold Red podcast, Cold Red, where you can get it. Uh, you get that on Spotify, Apple, all the usual platforms. James, thanks as always for joining us. Appreciate it. You're welcome. Thank you. And he joined us on our turnkey.pro answer line. Connect with Dan and Amy using the AM560 mobile app. Download it today at 560theanswer.com slash mobile. Hi, everyone. If you've been injured in an accident that was not your fault, listen up. We have legal